Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, and we are also still in the middle of Black History Month, so I wanted to talk about a uh, Black writer, Black poet, that has interested me as of late. Uh, And today's poem is all about teen pregnancy uh, and being around other teen mothers. I am referring to Holy Cross Hospital by Toy Derricotte. For those who don't know, Toy Derricotte is a Black uh, author uh, who's written a number of books of poetry, uh, and she has also um, uh, sort of created a workshop or a publishing company that helps get uh, Black writers sort of notoriety and whatnot. Uh, So amplifying Black voices, which is very important, uh, regardless of what time period you're, you're in. Uh, so, um, yeah, pretty cool. That's all I seem to know about, uh, Toy Derricotte. Um, but I, I'm a big fan of, uh, of her poetry. It seems very personal, um, m- maybe a bit more prose-ish than, than other poems that I found, but, uh, still impactful as well. And so without further ado, let's talk about Holy Cross Hospital. I will read it, do a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. Holy Cross Hospital. Couldn't stand to see these new young faces, these children swollen as myself. My roommate, snotty, bragging about how she didn't give a damn about the kid and was going to go back to her boyfriend and be a cheerleader in high school. Could we ever go back? Would our bodies be the same? Could we hide among the childless? She always reminded me of a lady at the bridge club in her mother's shoes, playing her mother's hand. I tried to get along, be silent, stay in my own corner. I only had a month to go, too short to get to know them, but being drawn to the room down the hall, the TV room, where at night we sat in our cuddly cotton robes and fleece-lined slippers like college freshmen, joking about the nuns and laughing about due dates, jailbirds waiting to be sprung. One girl, taller and older, 26 or 27, kept to herself, talked with a funny accent. The pain on her face seemed worse than ours. And a lovely, gentle girl with flat, small bones. The great, round hump seemed to carry her around. She never said an unkind word to anyone, went to church every morning with her rosary, and prayed each night alone in her room. She was 17, diabetic, fearful that she or the baby or both would die in childbirth. She wanted the baby, yet knew that to keep it would be wrong. But what if the child did live? What if she gave it up and could never have another? I couldn't believe the fear, the knowledge she had of death walking with her. I never felt stronger eating right, doing my exercises. I was holding on to the core, the center of strength. Death seemed remote. I could not imagine it walking in our midst, death in the midst of all that blooming. She seemed sincere, but maybe she was lying. She went down two weeks late, induced. She had decided to keep the baby. The night I went down, she had just gone into labor, so the girls had two of us to cheer about. The next morning when I awoke, I went to see her. She smiled from her hospital bed with tubes in her arms. It had been a boy. Her baby was dead in the womb for two weeks. I remember she complained, no kicking. We had reassured her that everything was fine. Meanwhile, I worked in the laundry, folded the hospital fresh sheets flat three hours a day, but never alone. Stepping off the elevator, going up, feeling something, a spark catch. I would put my hand there and smile with such a luminous smile. The whole world must be happy. Or out with those crazy girls, those teenagers laughing, on a Christmas shopping spree free, the only day they let us out in two months, feet wet and cold from snow. I felt pretty, body wide, and still in black beatnik leotards, washed out at night, my shapely legs and young body like iron. I ate well, wanted Lamas, painless childbirth. I didn't need a husband or a trained doctor. I do it myself. Book propped open on the floor, puffing and counting while all the 16-year-old unwed children smiled like I was crazy. 
One day I got a letter from my cousin said, don't give your baby up. You'll never be complete again. You'll always worry where and how it is. She knew. The people in my family knew. Nobody died of grief and shame. I would keep the child. I was sturdy, would be a better mother than my mother. I would still be a doctor, study, finish school at night. When the time came, I would not hurt like all those women who screamed and took drugs. I would squat down and deliver just like the peasants in the field, shift my baby to my back and continue. When my water broke, when I first, when, when I saw that stain of pink blood on the toilet paper and felt the first thing I could not feel, had no control of, dripping down my leg, I heard them sing, singing Mitch Miller Xmas songs and came from the bathroom in my own pink song, down the long hall, down the long moment when no one knew but me, it was time. All the girls were cheering when I went downstairs. I was the one who told them to be tough, to stop believing in their mother's pain, that poison. Our minds were like telescopes looking through fear. It wouldn't hurt like we'd been told. Birth was beautiful if we believed that it was beautiful and right and good. Maternity, I had never seen inside those doors. All night I pictured the girls up there, at first hanging out the windows, trying to get a glimpse of me when the pain was worst. I thought of their sleeping faces, like the shining faces of children in the nursery. I held onto that image of innocence like one light in the darkness. In terms of analysis, that was Holy Cross Hospital. Uh, in terms of yeah, like in terms of analysis, in terms of narrative, it's pretty clear to see what what uh, the narrator is talking about here. They are pregnant, but they're being kept at a sort of hospital retreat type area, one that would suggest that uh, you know the family might be embarrassed that they're pregnant, or they don't want anyone to find out that they're uh, they're pregnant because that might bring shame, depending on social class and 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 whatnot. And so there's sort of some bonding happening uh, and some worrying happening about whether or not the children uh, are will be healthy and whatnot. Uh, and one child, one one te uh, like teenager, like their child dies before they're able to give birth to it, which is unfortunate. Uh, and then the narrator goes into uh, childbirth. Um, it goes into labor, and uh, it seems like uh, we don't find out what happens to them, but they do imagine the support that they feel from uh, their their fellow inmates or their fe their fellow uh, pregnant uh, teenage friends, um, or what I would imagine is their is their friends. Uh, so. Um, Pretty unusual poem. You don't see too many like this talking about this sort of uh, topic, like teen pregnancy. Uh, it should be it should be noted that there is some fear in this poem, talking about um, like what is to come and like uh, w uh, whether or not they'll feel pain, and even if they'll even even be able to carry the children. There's there's a desire to go back to your life before uh, getting pregnant, uh, which a lot of teenagers would, would probably feel because, you know, your youth is very important and having a child is a lot of responsibility and not everyone who is 16 or 17 necessarily wants that responsibility. So some are like, some want to just give it up and others would like to keep it. But there's always that question of, could we ever go back? Would our bodies be the same? Could we hide among the childless? That give, or having a child and giving birth is an ordeal that maybe it would be hard to relate to your generation among the, the people who haven't had children yet because you've been through an experience that... Um, only a select number of people have, have really gone through. Uh, and so, uh, like, you you can try to ignore that and go back to your original life, but uh, can you go home again is always that uh, that, that question. Um, it should also be noted the the use of religion in this poem. Uh, specifically, like, in an in, in in early verse, there it said, um, she never said an unkind word to anyone, went to church every morning with her rosary, and prayed each night alone in her room. And so there's 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 themes of, of being sent to sort of a religious camp where you can hide your pregnancy and then presumably the nuns will give up the child for adoption afterwards. Uh, and you can see, you know, how religion has typically treated women, um, especially women of color, how they've been forced to maybe give up their children um, to white parents or something like that in an effort to... Um, and give them some semblance of normalcy and, and go back to their original life. Uh, but 
you know, you know re- religion has also told women that, you know, having sex, even being pregnant is unnatural or, you know, that it's it's sinful to have sex or something like that or to have underage uh, sex and um, also to uh, have children underage is, is wrong. So these children are probably being in a position where they're being told that they were wrong on a constant basis. And maybe that's adding a little bit to the to the doubt, to the to the fears. Um, and then the last thing worth noting about this poem is the sense of unity and bonding. You especially see that at the uh, the la- in the in the last verse where the narrator says, "Maternity, I had never seen inside these doors. All night I pictured the girls up there at first hanging out the windows, trying to get a glimpse of me. When the pain was worse, I thought of their sleeping faces, like the shining faces of children in a, in the nursery. Once again, getting at the sort of youth um, uh, experience in this poem, contrasting with the act of giving birth, but also the sense of unity and, and uh, picturing others, picturing your friends, picturing people." who are in the same situation in order to um, feel a sense of unity and and understand that maybe you can get through uh, the situation. Um, Because that seemed to happen to others, even though the the other girl lost her child in this story or in in this poem, uh, there was still that sense of unity that helped her get through some of it. Uh, So um, uh, the act of, you know, bonding with with someone is what Terracott is really talking about here, especially in uncertain times and uncertain situations. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Holy Cross Hospital by Toy Derricott. A pretty solid uh, poem, one that uh, sort of has a sort of darker undertones with the uh, the fears of uh, like uh, losing your baby and wanting to keep it, but also being for- in a situation where you're expected to give your baby up for adoption because there's worries about what the family back home might think. Uh, but luckily for the narrator, in this situation, their family seems supportive. Uh, but um, pretty morose uh, kind of poem, I would say, but still important to read. I'll put a link to it in the description. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or just you know comment on my, on my review or analysis of this poem. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that other people can find out about this poem uh, or this poet if they don't already know. Uh, join the Discord if you want to have further conversations about th- poetry or uh, things outside of poetry. And until then, uh, we wish you the, or I wish you the best of luck in your weird and giving birth travels. Farewell.